All right, we are on to the fifth question of the AP Calculus BC 2023 exam. Uh, again, this is from the non-calculator portion, and this is um, my best guess or attempt at this question. Uh, remember that the scoring guides have not yet been released, but I'm gonna do my best job with this. So uh, we've got a function that is given here, um, actually two functions, f and g, uh, and we're also given their graphs. So it is known that g of x is equal to 12 plus 3 over x for any x value greater than or equal to 0. Uh, meanwhile, f is not given. However, we are told that it is a twice differentiable function, and it satisfies f of 3 being equal to 2. And we know that the integral or the definite integral of our function f from 0 to 3 is equal to 10. Okay, So that's all they're giving us for f, but that's actually quite a bit. That's all we're going to need. So first things first, uh, find the area of the shaded region enclosed by the graph of f and g. So we know that whenever we're finding the area in between two curves given by functions, we always want to kind of think of it as the higher minus the lower in terms of our integral. So we want to integrate the higher function minus the lower function uh, from the two points where our functions are intersecting. So it's pretty obvious by looking at it, but if you want to just look at this, you'd say, all right, where is g of x actually equal to f of x? Where is that actually happening? Well, right here at 0 and here when x is equal to 3. So that happens at x is equal to 0 and 3. So those are going to be our bounds of our integration. By the way, we're going to integrate that with respect to x. All right, so with that in mind, let's actually write the area then. All right, so the area is equal to, sorry, my handwriting, um, we're going to be integrating from 0 to 3, and our higher function here is f of x. That's the function that is the uh, bigger function, if you will. It's up top, right? So uh, it is f of x dx, and we're, from that we're subtracting our lower function, and we can write this all as one integral statement, but I'm, but I'm just going to write here just so we can clearly see the two, because in a second we're going to do some substituting and evaluating, and so I want to kind of have those separated just to see clearly. So first off, we don't know the function of f, but we are conveniently given the value of the definite integral of f from 0 to 3. We're told that that is just equal to 10. So we're just going to say that this is equal to 10 here. Meanwhile, we are given the function of g, so we are going to need to show that we know how to integrate that, which we all know how to do, right? So what do we have here? We've got 12 over 3 plus x. That's the function that we need to integrate, dx. And if it makes your life easier, we can go ahead and move that 12 to the outside. So we've got 1 over 3 plus x, if you need to. And you could have done this all in one step, uh, dx. Well, now that we have it written in this form, hopefully we can see the structure a little bit more clearly. Uh, that's going to be an integral that results in the natural log. So 10 minus 12 and the natural log of the absolute value of 3 plus x. And since our um, variable here was just x. We know that the derivative of that is just 1 dx, so we don't have to do anything else in terms of integrating, uh, just applying the integral rule for natural logs. And all of that then is going to be evaluated from 0 to 3. So continuing to evaluate here, we've got 10 minus 12, the natural log. Now we're going to evaluate this argument at 3, which is just going to be 6, and the absolute value of 6 is just 6. And then we're also going to have to distribute that 12 as we evaluate this argument at 0 times the natural log of 0. Okay, So that is just going to be, go ahead and say the natural log, excuse me, not, not the natural log of 0, uh, the natural log of 3. And you know what, I'm just going to put all of this here just so that we don't get confused, minus the natural log of 3. Okay, and pretty sure that you could just leave your answer in that form, but if you needed to, you could also just say this is 10 minus 12 and just apply a log property right over there. We're subtracting two logarithms with the same base, so you can just divide their arguments. So that's just a natural log of 2. So 10 minus 12 natural log of 2. Pretty sure you could do that as well if you wanted to, but I think you could leave it in this if you needed to. All right, so let's move on to part B. So in part B, um, going to ask us to evaluate the improper integral of g of x squared from 0 to infinity. So I won't completely rehash improper integrals, but know that we have to uh, 
utilize the idea of a limit to evaluate an integral whose upper bound is approaching infinity or is infinity, if you will. So for our improper integral, I'm going to just move this down here since we're down to g of x, we can say that the limit, and we're going to use a variable because we can't use the same variable in which we're integrating with respect to. So I'm going to use a, the limit as a approaches infinity. And what we're doing now is we're replacing our infinity symbol with that variable so that it allows us to say, hey, I can't actually add up uh, all the way up to infinity, but I can look at the limit of this integral as our upper bound approaches infinity. So now that I have that, I'm gonna write my g of x function, which is just gonna be this, all of this squared. This is our g of x squared. So that's just gonna be 144 over three plus x squared in the denominator dx. And since I've got a constant in my numerator, I'm just going to move that to the outside. 144, the limit as a approaches infinity, interval from 0 to a, and perhaps writing it using negative powers might help you see it. You don't need to do this part, but if you see it there, we can just see that we're just applying the power rule. So 144 times the limit, again, writing all this again. And I think actually we're ready to integrate, right? Just using the power rule there, we can see that this would be negative three plus x to the negative one power. And we're valuing all of that from zero to a, okay? And I'm gonna write this as I start to value my integral. And I'm gonna put my limit statement actually inside its own bracket so I don't get anything mixed up. So the limit as a approaches infinity, well, what do we have? We're gonna evaluate that, um, our resulting integral in terms of a uh, with a so I've got negative 1 over 3 plus a and if I evaluate that integral again with 0 plugged in for x that's just going to be plus 1 third which allow me to evaluate my integral pretty nicely now uh, so the limit as a approaches infinity we're going to use the limits at infinity theorem to say all of this has to go towards so as our denominator grows without bound, that quotient is going to be equal to zero. Okay, you don't have to actually write any of that, but hopefully we see that. And then we just have one third. So this is just going to be 144 times one third, and that is equal to 48. So our improper integral does indeed exist. We can integrate it, and it turns out that it is equal to 48. All right, last part. We're now going to let h, our new function, we're introducing a new function to the game. h is a function defined by x times f prime of x. And this right here, when I first saw this, I knew right away what we were going to need to do. And sure enough, it says find the value of uh, h of x with respect to x from 0 to 3. And what I was alluding to earlier is this is a prime candidate for integrating by parts. So if h of x is equal to this function, I can say the following. Let's rewrite that here. We got 0 to 3. And let me actually zoom in a little bit here. So 0 to 3, we have x times f prime of x dx. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's define some variables. I'll just write this in a separate color. Um, for me, it makes the most sense to have our u be equal to x and then our du be equal to dx. And then that means dv would be the other function, which was f prime of x dx, excuse me. Sorry, something got on my screen. I promise I wasn't just having a seizure or anything as I was writing. All right, f prime of x dx, and then v is equal to f of x. Okay? All right, so now that we have that established, we can actually do our integration by parts. So we can say all of this is equal to x times f of x, and those of you who've been in my class know we're, we're doing this. This is going to be ultraviolet voodoo, all right? So maybe I'll just write this in a separate color right below, right? uv minus integral of v du, and this is a special integration by parts rule, which allows us to integrate certain functions where simply we're using reverse chain rule doesn't really help us too much. So. So we have uv minus the integral of v du. So we've got our u, we've got our v, now we've got minus the integral of v du. So we've got 
f of x or the integral of f of x dx, and we're integrating that from 0 to 3. And should note here, since we've already integrated this first part, this is our integral, so we've got to evaluate that integral from 0 to 3. So continuing this on, we're plugging that in. x is equal to 3, then we're going to do f of 3. And then we're going to subtract from that our integral evaluated at 0. Well, that's just 0. Okay. Now let's actually subtract the integral of f of x uh, from 0 to 3, which was given to us as being equal to 10. So we're going to subtract 10. Now all that's left for us to do is actually evaluate what f of 3 is. And that also was given to us. That's equal to 2. So we have 3 times 2 minus 10. And that's equal to negative 4. So there's our answer. You don't need to box it but I like to, because that is a job well done. All right, so that was the fifth question from the 2023 uh, Calc BC exam, uh, the non-calculated portion.